praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for tuning in with Dr. Leisha, the preacher, okay? <laughs> well, today's reading is for Joan Rivers. This is a Joan Rivers reading, and um, I'm conducting Joan Rivers reading at uh, a local crystal shop. I've been speaking with the manager here, um, trying to create a space for me to do certain readings. So I figured, hey, let's start off with Joan Rivers. Oh, all right. And the other day, I was just kind of like running around here, and I didn't have my little shawl on or anything to cover my shoulders. <laughs> well, I do today, okay. But, um, Recently, I had a comment on one of my videos asking, um, am I for the LGBTQ plus other, you know, letters, um, am I for them? And I said, well, I represent the B in that alphabet list, but as far as the LGBTQ plus community as, as a whole, I mean, I'm not signed up for anything and I don't really subscribe to anything in particular, but I fall on the, on the spectrum, I fall on the spectrum. And so with that being said, I have a personal interest and investment in matters related to that. And so Joan Rivers, made a statement about the Obamas having some type of transgender um, situation in their lives. I'll just say it like that. And so, well, that made me go ahead and purchase the Pride Tarot. Like I said, I'm not really a you know, LGBTQ plus type, um, you know, like rah, 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 cheerleader kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't follow anything, you know, off a cliff, you know. The, the, the major problem I have with this whole LGBTQ plus transgender, same sex, marriage, and all this kind of stuff, the only problem I have, really, the major only problem is, I don't want men in women's bathrooms. Just like I'm born a woman, and I don't belong in men's bathrooms, I just don't belong in there. No matter how I dress, no matter how I look, I don't belong in those bathrooms. Likewise. Men, you're born a certain gender. I'm sorry, just like I'm born as a woman. I'm sorry, I'm stuck here. You're stuck over there. I don't want you in the bathroom. No matter how you dress, look, whatever, it's the problem. Stay out of each other's bathrooms. That's all I, that's all I do. That's all I do. Other than that, hey. Now it works. Yeah. And then our hey, let's, you know, never mind. Oh, I forgot the church. Oh, it is. Okay, cool. <laughs> The Bible says a marriage is honorable and all, and God will judge. In that department of our lives, God will judge as far as marriage goes. But it's honorable at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, so I'm doing this reading, and I have the Pride Tarot book with it. Okay. And again, the only reason I'm doing it is because. Joan Rivers, rest in peace, lost her yeah. life. And I'm not saying she's right or wrong. I'm not saying the Obamas are right or wrong. All I know is that a woman lost her life, one way or another. And I believe that we need the truth. We need the truth on this issue. So, here we go, guys. <laughs> As you guys know, I've done the Jimmy Fox reading. <laughs> I'll probably need to do a follow-up on his reading. I want to do a Tina Turner reading. 
But right now, it's Joan Rivers, and here we go. So I'm gonna swerve my camera around so you can see my hands. You see that I'm in a public place. I'm in a public place. Uh, you know, like you see me a little bit, you know, a little bit of the table, a little bit of me. And then I'm gonna have someone they're going to join me here at the table with the reading. However, uh, they don't want to be seen, and that's fine. So I'm just at a local crystal store that's allowing me to do my Joy Rivers reading here. And I'm purchasing um, this deck of cards, but I'm donating it to the business so that it can be used in public use. Okay? <laughs> All right, guys, let's get this going. Yeah. So this is a spanking brand new deck. I just purchased it and cracked it over. Um, so. I love it here. It's like my little spiritual lounge, a little temple. Now he has his own little altar and stuff here. I think he's ha he has like five different ones, like altars, little temple type equipment and stuff here. I'm gonna make this uh, video hopefully short and sweet because my battery is low. I do see that, that my battery is low. I wonder if you can charge it. Without it being an issue. All right, so, all right, Joan Rivers, Joan Rivers. I know there's conversation in the background. This is a, a store for public, you know, use. Well, welcome to the shop. Thank you for coming today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, Ooh, Joan Rivers, I see a couple of cards. Now we're going to make this current energy, okay? Joan Rivers, current energy. Three of Cups. Four of Cups. Five of Cups. So I need to shuffle this better, huh? <laughs> So we got three, four, five of cups all coming out together. So um, I'm gonna leave them. I mean, I know I didn't get this shuffle as well as I wanted to, but hey, we gotta keep it. We got two of cups, so all the cups are coming out. And we have six of swords, six of swords. So, you know, I didn't get the shuffle very well, but these are the cups that are coming out. Um, six of swords. Now, this, was, this is in the position of past energy. Past energy. So I'm going to look it up really quick. Set this over here. Six of Swords. We have all the cups out here. And it's probably because I didn't shuffle good, but I'm going to, you know, extend the reading anyway. Not extend it, but make it thorough as, as long as the battery works. So this is what? Uh, six of Swords. The Six of Swords illustrates a time of, of transition. The two women are leaving the past behind and journeying to a safe place where they can start a new authentic life together. This card offers an empowering message that urges you to escape from that which has confined you and prevented you from being your true self. This may be a trip into the unknown, but the destination is one where you will be welcomed and accepted. So in the past, Joan Rivers was, uh, you know, encouraging uh, really honesty, and with the honesty comes acceptance.
current energy and I know that they're all right in a row and that's fine. I wasn't able to shuffle well before the cards came out and that's okay. It is what it is. Uh, we have the Three of Cups. What's to be accepted? What's to be accepted? That my marriage is honorable and all. It's honorable and all. I want to be able to show it up my hands. Yeah, with the, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, the table. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go through, okay. So, the Three of Cups. Marriage is honorable. And all. And, like you guys know, that if you can have same-sex marriages today, I believe you should be able to have multiple marriages. Why not? We need to open up marriage laws to include all. I'd like to chime in here yes, on ahead. the fact that marriage, uh, society, and we as a species have the construct of marriage completely wrong. Completely. What it is, is what appropriate marriage is is when a shaman, when a light worker, when somebody has gained in their spiritual course, then they wind up wedding the divine that has led them through everything. And then when you find someone, when somebody is drawn and they have wedded the divine that you are wedded to, then your marriage isn't to each other. It's to the divine that's guiding you both. More like this Three of Cups energy here. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. The two of you, Three of you, four of you, five of you, however many are in a union, are not in this union alone. Correct. You all share a common numerator, denominator, something in the equation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> something in the equation is common to all involved. And what happens is we have this image of what we think family life is and when we don't fit into that image then we're left broken hearted someone's left out of the equation when it's not necessary Joan Rivers was promoting let's all be honest and call it what it is you know some things just shouldn't be shoved down people's throats. Whether it's tradition or whether it's deception, it shouldn't be shoved down people's throats, one way or the other. And it's not so much that the Obamas are right or wrong, whether they are a transgender couple or not, that's irrelevant. The relevance is they were deceptive in it, if it's true. That's it right now. The That's divides. it right there. Because we got to remember, pride is all about what life, healing, sunlight, nature, serenity, spirit. And when I look at these colors, I think of the rainbow. And when I think of the rainbow, I think of God's promise that he's not going to flood this earth again. Now, he may burn this bitch up, but he's not going to flood it again. <laughs> Amen to that. I'm into that. And it's not even about it being burned up like with literal fire, per se. Which some areas are. Some areas do. We get California every year. You can count on it certain places all over the earth have volcanoes, all kind of stuff erupting and all. In our minds, sometimes our minds are just burnt up with deception, pain, suffering. Our minds are burning. Sometimes our way of life is all burnt up. It's not like it used to be. It needs to change. So the promises of God, you know, even if we take those same colors and call it pride, 
whatever promises pride bearer we're to be honest with one another we're to you know accept one another each other's gifts talents they're all different we all look different smell different talk different you know but what we have in common is a creator no matter what relationship we're in whether it's romantic family friends professional honesty is the foundation of it let people get married you know if you're bold enough and can afford legal marriage good for you but if not there's spiritual merit natural merit there's so many levels to this there's one-on-one -on -one marriage there's multiple marriages same-sex marriages traditional marriage you know take your pick create the family you want be committed to it whatever you do don't be lying cheating you know abandoning and neglecting people period Stop breaking people's hearts. That's all Joan Rivers really want to say. Stop breaking people's hearts. Be inclusive. We can all be our separate selves, our individual selves, without breaking other people's lives and hearts and breaking promises and, you know, having no pride in ourselves. <laughs> Marriage is whatever you want it to be. Two people, three people, four people, same sex, different sex, same color, different colors, you know. But the, whatever you choose for your life, just understand there's pros and cons, good and bad associated with it. Be willing to live out both the good and the bad with it. You got to be able to suffer together to reign together. So that's why I'm going to reiterate an actual marriage. A marriage is not for a young person to be involved in. This is something for somebody who has followed their spiritual course. They have matured and they have literally wedded a divine entity. And then when you follow your course, then you will find somebody else who has wedded the same divine entity. And when they, when you come together at that degree, then there are no ups and downs. There are no horrible. There is no fuck having picking your problems because both of you are with the divine and they are guiding you in each and every turn of the way so yes. you're in complete harmony there is no chaos in the marriage because you both go to the same divine you're wedded to which is going to give you the exact same information as you both need to have clear understanding right and when you move too soon it creates conflict Bottom. so if, if you're experiencing conflict then you need to back up a little bit now some people say you need to just completely throw it away well, you have to use discernment on that. Some people you need to be completely done with, and then others you need to back up, give it some, let it air out, and then come back in and try again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just depends. Agreed. Love it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I see you have some cards there. I do. Oh, my I'm goodness. I'm going to go <laughs> grab my book right quick. Now, I grew up watching Joan Rivers, and comedian or not, she wasn't known to be a liar. You know, there's something about humor, comedy, from when I was a child. Even the comedians, we knew when we when we knew the difference between comedy and you know, just people living a lie. There's a difference. And so you know, I think there's something to what she's saying. I'm not saying that anyone's a liar or not. You know, it's just that this reading is worth investigating, I guess. You know, and especially with the laws of the land allowing same sex marriage, which I have no problem with. But again, anything we decide to do on this earth. It has good and bad consequences to it, period. 
even having a, a child, having any relationship at all, anything you do, has good and bad for it. There's no way to escape that. If I'm not mistaken, these cards are right in lead uh, with what you're talking about. Uh, and it's interesting the way these cards are, the way these cards came out. And we'll show his cards in a moment. In the meantime, let me check one more card here. Four of Pentacles. Someone is keeping something to themselves. Someone's trying to hoard, hoard the truth. <laughs> yup, yup. And these three actually come right in line with that. You may show these to the camera. We're starting here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put them in the correct position for yourself uh, that they're in. Deep, so let's go down, start here. And so we have the Ten of Onks to start with, and this is bringing out happiness, loving relationships. Obviously, we have the prosperity and the blessings. We think we have spiritual harmony here. Everything is aligned with exactly what we believe that we want. However, the very next card, or go ahead and, and yep, yep, we have what we want. The next card here is best in the reverse position which is bringing up danger, mortal activity, lack of defense, insecurity, and antagonist. This one. And, yep. and so what I believe this is expressing is that we have these marriages, we are involved in certain marriages, and we think we have everything we want, but the reality is, is that there's danger because of the card you were bringing out on honesty. There's not full-fledged honesty in our current relationships. No. And thus we have danger, uh, a lack of defense. If, if, if it's full of deception, then you don't have the defense that you thought you did. So where we had security actually mm -hmm. was no security. Right. And here we come to the third card that I wound up drawing, which is the reality of your heart that is being denied. And it, the truth is, is that you have insecurity, blocked creativity, infertility. Now this can both be physical and this can also be creative wise. You, there is an overbearing, there's a negligence, there's a disharmony, impurity, animosity, and cruelty, and ultimately foolishness. And isn't this the reality of us in a relationship of which we were wanting to heal and make blossom and loving, but because of the danger, because of the lies, then we have this impurity, we have this insecurity, and this insecurity transfers to everybody we talk to, and especially with us trying to connect with our higher selves. If we feel insecure, then we're not gonna communicate on an insecure line. That's right. And so in all of, these cards coming out, I believe this is heavily saying, look, world, this is where we're at. Truly assess what's going on. The truth will be opened up to you. Don't deny the omens. And like a scientist, accept the results for what they are and not what you want them to be. Right. That's right. And I agree, every single time I see the rainbow, I agree with what you said, absolutely, Alicia, because the rainbow to me, it's life, it's beauty, it's harmony, it's all the elements mm -hmm. in one picture, in one image. And so, yes, this brings in the gay or the transgender or whatever color you are or whatever faith you have mm -hmm. or whatever your personal style of life and faith is, you gravitate to a particular color, a frequency, a vibration. And so in the rainbow, we see how all of these are connected mm -hmm. and are one. And that's what we have to realize. And just like we were talking about earlier today, we are all one. Right. We are going through this human experience collectively and mm -hmm. together. Okay. So let's talk about, if, this, if you're comfortable talking about this, 
um, the Obamas. Now, there's no evidence in my life to prove that they are a transgender couple. Okay, there's no evidence in my life. I'm just going by the simple fact that Jones River put out a video years ago and now we're dealing with this transgender issue in the world, okay? Yep. To the point where our vice president is going over to Africa trying to convince them to take on and consider certain laws. Whoa. I don't know if that has anything to do with us or should be our business at all. But Agreed. <laughs> but, Agreed. <laughs> but anyway, this is how, in, 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 in today's society, men can appear or boys can be in girls' locker rooms and the girl can be upset and get kicked out of school. So, you know, we have to talk about this stuff. And I, 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 I personally, I, whether you've had an operation or not, whatever gender you were born as, whatever equipment that the divines gave you, you should not be allowed in a different gender's room. As far as changing, yeah. undressing, using the bathroom, these are vulnerable spaces. And we have too much predators, sexual deviant predators alive to allow such such ugliness yes. Yes. to even have the chance or opportunity mm -hmm. to act. Because again, the whole thing about pride, promises, protection, love, is so that people can have a better life, can be healed, have sunlight, feel natural. You know, these are good things. But we're we're making good things ugly. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of lack of acceptance. Lack of acceptance of the self. And here's something I want to hit on the transgender and sex. All all of it. All yeah. of it. Here's what I want to hit. Number one, what's going on is we are these are shamans these are light workers and you're trying to find the duality of your reality now in that if you're masculine and you decide to go feminine so you lock off your penis and you change your voice and you don't want to have anything to do with anything masculine well you're denying your growth you're denying your own harmony because now yeah. you're in judgment not of others but of your own body of your own self and for a shaman for a light worker for a healer for anyone on these lines you have to have to if you want to progress you have to accept the feminine and the masculine yes there is harmony and in that duality as we were talking earlier Alicia is in that duality we find a connection to the divinity that is guiding us. Mm -hmm. And so what I believe really is going on at the core of all of this transgender stuff is that people are remembering their past lives and they remember it so much that they have to be that female they were in a past life. And so they're having those identity crises. Yeah. And it's a crisis, not because you're going through it, but it's a crisis because everyone around you is trying to label your developmental progress. You're in a state of transition and discovery, and they're trying to label you. You're in the process of breaking labels. Right, exactly. 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 And so it's, it's a very spiritual experience that they are making very mundane, very oh, your body, I'm going to sexualize it. Um, no, my body is my body, body, and I'm happy. I love my body. Now how I accessorize it is different. It's different, right? yeah. I, it, it's a Barbie doll. How do I want to dress her up? I dress it up however I want. I looked in the mirror, and I was confused if I was looking at a male or a female. I did, my body looked like female, and I know I'm a male. Well, I'm going to dress it up like a female. If it has the curves, well, then I'm going to put them kind of clothes on it. If it was more masculine, well, then I'll probably go the more masculine route. Even though I'm male, I'm embracing my feminine qualities and feminine traits. And that helps people be comfortable with themselves because right. we all have this dual aspect within ourselves. And... The whole experience with Adam, Eve in the garden kind of thing, it's almost like 
all these conflicts we're experiencing, you know, with relationships and how to manage people in our lives and, you know, how, how do we handle it if the Obamas are a transgender couple? How do we handle that? I mean, had it been under an from an honest place, I think we would handle it much better than handling it from a dishonest place. Mm -hmm. I I I have a couple of conflicting thoughts, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm seeing both kind of sides of the table. Now, one number one, I advocate honesty. Honesty, honesty. That is the most important yes, thing. Honesty. However, if Obama was honest. I don't know for sure or whatever the case, but if his wife is technically has the male body, then if they would have addressed that to the world, there's no way in hell, heaven or earth they would have been elect he would have been elected president. Number two, it would make sense because they cleared Obama cleared a lot of stuff for the transgenders, really opened up some doorways that were never opened up before. Right. So his so there was a definite love of this grouping of people because this grouping of people is a legit worldwide shamanic initiation process and they're all going if you're in this transgender stuff you're a shaman and these are part of your initiatory trials to grow into full power that you have wow. and so they opened the door for all of these sh sh shaman initiates to be able to not just get their feet wet, but jump in the pool, let's have the experience, let's go through with it. And it would make sense if his wife was of that sort, how important this was as a couple, not just him as a president, but as a couple to really allow the world, the United States and into the world to allow this to be a reality and as it is that we have today. Um, and, and so in that, in the dishonesty, they were able to do a lot of good work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I gotta, I gotta say okay to that. I gotta say okay yeah. to that because the world wasn't ready, but the shamans were. were. So this was for the shamans. This was divine cosmic law saying, "Government, you fooled, you've lied, you've tricked, you have been breaking cosmic law. So now we're going to allow this lie, this dishonesty, to occur." so that we can follow cosmic law and reinstigate, restart appropriate uh, uh, operations, spiritual operations, if you will. And it's interesting how the woman always is blamed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The female representation. Mm-hmm. It's, they, they the black all the woman. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it, you go back to the Bible and she has like, I'm going to get it wrong. She has like nine curses and the man gets like one and like the devil gets like one, like what? Why did the woman? Do? It's because Christianity is patriarchy dominating the world as a teenage boy without a mama. Mm. They took the mama out the picture. The Holy Ghost, that is the divine feminine. And they replaced her with a non-gender, non-relatable character. Excuse the house runs because you got mama, papa, and child. Yes. Not because you got Papa and Ghost and how did we have the child? Well, last I heard, it was the lady who got impregnated by the angel, not no man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So they, 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 and see, that's another thing people aren't willing to talk about: the many ways that women can be impregnated. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, not limited to. Um, her male counterpart. Exactly. We can get pregnant by spirit. Yes. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> yes. Serpent. I believe the serpent was a type of uh, fertilizer for Eve, and I believe that's where yes. Cain's seed came from. Because why would the serpent seed need to be, you know, punished? Exactly. If it had no real, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the way I birth first... is very important. Yep, birth is important. Yep, and yeah. the serpent found a way to birth itself. Exactly, can't plant do it with a, a man. Plant a seed, a thought, a thought. Yep, that's it. Mm -hmm. And that thought allows us to manifest through the multiple forms that we connect with nature. Yes. Let's just 
throw the word spirit out of the conversation for a moment and, and let's nature, put the there. word nature, nature right because there. this is what all the ancients were connecting to this isn't something immaterial we don't understand this mm, is nature, nature that we see all around us and if it's nature that we see all around us then obviously we're a part of nature so then that cycle of nature is a part of our cycle we go through that too mm -hmm. we go through mm -hmm. the fire we go through the the burning afterwards we go through all the ashes and then grows a new life mm -hmm. and so we are con yes yes yeah so again you know the whole movement when i see these cards on the table i see uh 10 of was this cups, I guess, or ten of wands? Ten of wands. Um, it would be cups, water. Cups, water. Yep. Okay, yeah. So we got ten of cups, we have the three of cups. Oh, okay. And um, what else here? Another family card, four of cups. You know, I mean, family life is so diverse. And it's not limited to our natural bloodline. Our natural bloodline is very important now. Come on, we don't want to underestimate it. But it's not limited to it. We have a spiritual line too. Mm -hmm. And I like to point out that the cups, the water in these cards is representing our subconscious. That water represents our subconscious and the thoughts that we have that we don't process cognitively. And so really deep down inside all of our souls and hearts, we want the family, we want the love, we want the happiness, and not through dishonesty, we want it purely and in a holy right. I just think that it's interesting how both the um, Six of Swords came out and the uh, Three of Cups came out. Yeah. Where, you know, we're at a time where, you know, the same sex marriage is on, you know, the books. And I don't think people are taking advantage of it as we would expect. And that's because legal marriage within itself has taken a huge no time. Exactly. Because it, it, it is a, it is a, a, it's horrible for what they have made marriage to be as it is today legally correct legally. in the legal form. so in the legal form. so people are still engaged in marriage on all other levels mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. of legal mm -hmm. you know women have always loved one another men have always loved one another this is nothing new under the sun nothing new So what's unique about uh, this one card here? That one. This one? That one's standing out to me. Um, not in relation to our reading. Though Bess is, he's this dwarf deity, I call him Nefernuman Devakami Elus, but just for the sake of things, he's this large dwarf of a celestial being. And in ancient Egypt, they did not find any altars dedicated to Bess. There's no sanctuary, there's no temples dedicated to him. But Bess was a protector that was essentially in every home altar. Bess was, a, is, was and is a protector of women and children. Mm. He ain't gonna let nothing harm them that they cannot grow from, that they're not supposed to let. He's going, ultimate protection he's gonna provide. Now, some things we gotta go through so that we learn from but he watches us and he protects us. Those who go through the events of life and they have suffered tragically and never were able to recover, that's because Bess was not in their life. He was not protecting them. Wow. And so if we appease Bess through our natural loving energies, then he's gonna be our guardian, our guardian that nobody sees or knows. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I love Bess. I had a, a monkey, a stuffed monkey growing up, and uh, I kind of look at him now as, as my best. <laughs> okay. He was my protector. Absolutely. That was beautiful, Alicia. Yes, it's a beautiful reading. Again, just having conversation. Exactly. You know, uh, Joan Rivers, again, um, I was led to have this reading on her behalf. 
just to bring up conversation. No reason for anyone to be alarmed no. or hate anybody over anything. No. She just wants us to know that we need to be more accepting of the many type of families out there. Exactly. Period. Accepting of the families, accepting and building them up. And if we can't build them up, then just get away. Just leave them alone then. Right. Don't right. bring them down. Mm -hmm. If you're suffering, that's because your karma, especially right now, currently, right now in the world, if you're not doing good, that's because your karma was very raunchy and it just got served to you. Oh my. <laughs> and so you need to go and do that introspective, do that shadow Get work, that work on yourself. Yeah. Don't project that on anybody else. Amen. Amen. Don't hurt them families. Mm -hmm. Help the families. Women and children. Women, and, women children. and children. And I would like to say uh, for this little temple, for this place, for my mission that I've been on this spiritual path, um, going back to 2012, when I first got activated, I should say it really became in my mind about 2014 or so. And uh, I forget which scripture it is in the Bible, but my personal mission statement, and I'm gonna get the words wrong, but my personal mission statement is to protect and to save the widows and the orphans. There you go. I don't care about anybody, it's the widows and the orphans. That's who I wanna help. And just, and it's not talking about just physical loss. Right. You could be right. an orphan with two parents in the house. That's right. Right. You could be a widow and surrounded by family, a husband, everything, but they left your, they left the faith you have, and so you're alone, and you're, you, you're, you're as if your partner died because they're not paying attention to you. Aww. You tell them what hurt, and then the next day they do exactly what hurt you again. And so that's, yeah, and so and and and, and so I, I wish uh, and desire and strive to assist. The widows and the orphans is my number one goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. And, 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 and even touching on transgender and all of that, you could be a man and be a widow. We could go into lots of different ancient books or whatever, yes. but just hitting the Bible for a moment says you're a bride of the king. Yes. So if we are a bride of the king, hence we are female. And if the church or whatever temple or services we were a part of, they used us, they hurt us, and then they cast us out like lepers. And you're a you're a widow wow. in your spiritual pursuit. Yeah. Don't matter what gender your body is. That's right. I agree with you on that one hundred percent. Yes. So wow. And and just real quick before we end in this, in the Bible we'll talk about the ten virgins. Mm -hmm. Now, there were two, ten women who were all virgins. Five were picked and five were left behind. So even being a virgin is not enough. You have got to be committed to the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, shit, I just got grease up all over. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's it. That, uh, you, you, I, mm, million percent. Yes, yes agree. Yes. Agreed across. Yep. Yeah. No additional words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Obama. Again, Obamas, we're not saying that you guys are a transgender couple. We're not saying that. I'm not saying that. Not saying we, that I either. have no medical proof or nothing like that. But if you guys are just based on the laws of the land that were initiated, at least associated with you guys, supports the the argument. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my only concern is the honesty, the dishonesty, the deception. But I understand how it was used to create more opportunities for families and um, the idea of what marriage really means. Mm -hmm. It really opened the door for more conversation. Mm -hmm. I just want to pray for children who are caught in the crossfire. Absolutely. That's what Absolutely. was not anticipated. Children being caught in the crossfire. Absolutely. And uh, just uh, just one little addition, not correction, addition to what you just said, Leisha, is that if, if like we, we don't have proof, we're not saying that right, she's right. A, a, any other gender. Exactly. However, if, yes. let me put it this way, not if, the truth 
should be spoken by the one who has been hiding it. Yes. Because when you speak the truth to the world, yourself, of your own truth, not anyone else's, of your own truth, yes. you will create blessings in your life and all the way around. You'll flip this shit house upside down okay. for the better. For the better. For the everybody will love you even more. You'll have your haters. You all, we always have always our haters. Will. But you'll have way more lovers. Yeah. You'll have way more support. The luck, the, the blessings, it'll all the grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the past is correct and the future, it can be correct. Yeah. And so that's everything yeah. else you said right there, there at the end. Go. Complete agreement. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for tuning with Dr. Luz. Tuning in with Dr. Lisa the Breacher. And if you want to contact me, my email address is Dr. Lisa the Preacher at gmail.com. And my cash app for love offerings is dollar sign Dr. Lisa the Preacher. Bye.